Okay, so I've had a few inquiries about how to configure OBS for live stream broadcasts of races. Um, so I thought I'd put together this quick tutorial video so I could point people towards it. There are plenty of other tutorial videos online as well about how to configure OBS that will probably go into far more depth than I will here. So they're quite good as well. I can recommend perhaps you go and just do a quick YouTube search, uh, look up some of those. First of all, OBS itself is open source, so it's free. So it's very popular, uh, and the OBS, I believe, stands for Open Source Broadcast System. Um, so it's used by a lot of streamers. The other one that's just as popular is Streamlabs, which I believe is very similar to OBS, but I've not used it. But hopefully most of the instructions here will apply to Streamlabs as well. So if you locate and download and install OBS, uh, I've already got some of it set up, but I think this is what you see when you first open it. It's been a long time since I first used it. So the first thing we should do is do the setup of OBS. If we go to the file menu and settings is the third option down. Alternately, there's a settings button down here in the control section. It's the second button up from the bottom. I'll get you to the same place, the general setup. Um, I have it set to automatically check for updates on startup, which is quite useful. And I don't believe I changed any of the other settings in this section. Uh, but feel free, the best way to learn is to have a look at each one of these options and try and understand uh, what it says. Then the next area I think you should go to is to video. So let's click on video and set up the video configuration. So there are four options in this section. There's the canvas resolution, the output resolution, uh, a downscale filter, and then how many frames per second. Now these will drive your output that is broadcast over whatever medium you're going to use, YouTube, Twitch, or perhaps even just save into hard drive for yourself. So the base canvas resolution is restricted by your video card settings. So if I click on this drop down list, I can go up to 1440, but I don't have a 4K monitor, therefore 4K is not an option for me. 7680 by 1440 is because I use triple screens. But I can also elect, I can't really broadcast that wide because it'll, it just won't work. If you think about somebody watching on a normal size screen, you can't take all three screens and try and squish them into one. So you can't really use something like 7680 by 1440. So think about your audience when you're selecting your output resolution. 2560 by 1440 might be attractive, but unless I believe you're a premier partner with YouTube or Twitch, you, are, you simply can't upload that sort of uh, resolution and, get a, and make it work, not for a live stream anyway. Most of your audience and what will work best for you is probably 1080. And if you're having rendering problems, think about 720p as well. I'm set my canvas to 1080. And the output scaled resolution is how you can also affect the, uh, the final. So you could do a higher canvas resolution uh, but then downscale it so you can then you can do outputs for different formats so if you are specifically targeting mobile you'd choose one of these lower resolution options for example i generally make it match i go for 1080 and 1080 on both outputs the downscale filter is something you may end up ex experimenting with depending on the capability of your hardware uh, i put it on lacrosse which is the highest resampling because i've got quite a powerful pc but if it's uh, any one of these above is going to get it's going to put less and less pressure on your computer to do the rendering. So if you're having rendering issues, think about maybe trying these uh, to improve things. Final option is the frames per second, and I go for 30 frames per second. Uh, so there are multiple options in here. 10 or 20 would probably be unbearable. 30 is only just getting away with it. And it's 60. So the canvas resolution is important. That's the output what we're going to send to the outside world. What I'm looking at when I'm playing my game is the 7680 by 1440 resolution. So bear that in mind. I've got to squish down a 7680 by 1440 image to fit in with a 1080p image. And that'll come to the fore a little while. Let's go to outputs and have a look at how you will configure your outputs from your stream. So video will capture your input and the output will then render what you've captured and send it to the outside world. The encoder is important. I'm using the X264 encoder, which is using the CPU on the on the PC and not the graphics card. If you click on the drop down list for here, you've got NVENC, which H264 new, and that's using your graphics cards to do the rendering. 
So it's a question depending on your particular hardware and how your PC is built. If your graphics card is more powerful and has got more capacity in your CPU, think about using NVENC, although some people criticize the output of NVENC as not being quite as quite as good. Um, so try these out. A uh, quick sync I've not even tried. I think that's a new option that's appeared recently. I, I use 264 because I've got uh, an i9 CPU, so it's quite powerful. Rescale output allows you to take the 1080p that we specified from the video output and shrink it down. So you've you've got either more options to keep changing the output. And this is the trouble with OBS. It's got lots and lots of options. It can get quite confusing. Uh, for the rest of the settings for streaming, remember we're on the streaming tab here. Uh, rate control I set to CBR. The bit rate I set to 5K. You are quite limited unless you're a partner with YouTube or a partner with Twitch on what sort of uh, bitrate you can upload. So you can't really go much faster than 5K, you'll find. You'll get warnings, certainly from YouTube, that your upload speed is exceeding the YouTube accept acceptance speed. So don't be worrying about having super massive numbers in here. It won't make any difference. I found I had lots of stuttering as well with uploads. So set the key f I set the keyframe to four after a lot of digging on the internet and found that worked. The CPU usage, again, this is all about how powerful your PC is. The faster, the further up the list you go for ultra fast, super fast, very fast, etc., uh, the less load on your CPU, but the more blocky the output will look on YouTube. Whereas I found slow or medium will give you really high quality output. Well, the renderer just can't keep up and you end up dropping lots of frames because it simply cannot produce the output in time. So I found faster was a was a good compromise. Profile I'll leave on none. And after another lot of digging, I found that film is a good tune to make the image look good. So that is your streaming outputs. If you click on recording, you can also record to your hard drive. And I use this for making uh, local files. So if you need to make a steward's inquiry file, you'll need to create a local recording. Or if you want to do something to, to bore your friends to death with, like I do with the highlight show and the race reviews, again, you'll need to capture the output to an output file. Choose the recording format output as MKV. But don't worry if you need an MP4. OBS has got a remux option in it, so it'll remix the MKV to an MP4 as required. Again, we're using the same X264 encoder, and we rescale the output to 1080p. So once we're all set with the settings, just click on OK and apply those. And we're going to create a scene. So what you broadcast when you're using OBS are scenes. So I've already got a bunch of scenes set up, but we're going to create a new one to show you how we do it from scratch. So go to Scene Collection on the menu and then select New. And we need to give the scene a name. So we'll just call this test broadcast. And then click on OK. And your scene is created. So down on the bottom left hand corner, we've got scenes. Then we've got sources. Then we've got audio mixer, scene transitions, and then controls. Different screen configurations are what you will build within the scenes box. So we've got one, the default is called scene. We will we'll leave that for the moment. And then you've got sources. So we've got a completely black screen. So what we need to do is we need to add some sources to the, to the scene so we can display them. So we've got our scene. And what we need to do now is we need to add components that will add to that scene that will build up in layers. And that's, uh, that's how you can make quite an advanced broadcast setup for OBS and why it's usually seen as more flexible and more powerful than uh, NVIDIA's shadow play because you've got far more control over what you are actually broadcasting. So we'll go to sources section. So we've got the scene, it's got the default name of scene. We'll go to sources and we'll add a source. You've got two big options here for getting your main visual output. You've got display capture and you've got window capture. 
So display capture will broadcast the entire contents of a monitor. So this one you've got to be careful of because if you use display capture, it'll broadcast through YouTube or wherever or Twitch or wherever you're broadcasting everything on your desktop, any files you've got open, any browser windows, anything that's got passwords to servers on, any of your emails, they'll all get broadcast to the world. So be very careful if selecting display capture and think carefully about what you'll have on show. A safer bet is window capture. So a window capture will only capture one window. Where this won't work is if you're trying to demonstrate something and it has a pop-out window. If a pop-out window is a separate window, it won't be part of your broadcast and nobody will be able to see it. So we'll choose window capture because we're going to well, our intention is to broadcast a set of course of competition. Uh, and that's just the one window for the game. So set window capture. And we need to give it a name. So we'll give this one game capture. And the reason you want to use names is when we start to build up a scene, there'll be a lot of complicated items on that scene. And we want to make sure that we can identify each one of them if we need to turn them on and off regards to visibility. So create new source, game capture, window capture, click on OK. So we've got a number of options here to set this uh, new component up that we're going to add to our scene. First is which window to capture. So if we click on the drop down list, we're after a set of course of competition. So the executable for a set of course of competition is called AC2. So the window is AC2. So select the window AC2. And we can see a little pop up here. It looks like a set of course. Oh, it's not quite filling the screen up. The reason is the capture method is set to automatic. If you click on that drop down and choose Windows 10 build 1903 and up, which is where you really should be if you're using OBS, that fixes the problem. Now we can see the entire scene in all its glory. Remember, I'm running triple screens, which is why this window is so rectangular. And you can imagine if you tried to broadcast that to somebody who's watching on a normal screen, the basically the image would be tiny. So that's something we're going to fix in a moment. If you're running, a, say, a 1080p screen and you want to broadcast a 1080p screen, you'll be fine and your window will fill. Match priority, leave that alone. Capture cursor, leave that alone, and client area, leave that alone. I don't think I've ever changed any of those areas, so click on OK. OK, so I've got a bit of a problem here. I'm My video cards run at a very, very high resolution compared to the 1080p output. I'm on 1440p in terms of height, but I'm also at 7,000 plus pixels wide. So as a consequence, our canvas is all that we can see at the moment. Our 1080p canvas is only capturing one third of the left of the screen. These hashed areas to the side are what I've got in my actual game that are not on the canvas. So if you see anything that's hashed, it means it won't be included in your broadcast. So we've got some grab handles on the window. I'll grab the grab handles and it keeps the window in proportion. So it scales it down. So I then grab it and bring it across. And scale it down again bring it across and now we can see the actual center of the screen and now I can also see just here are two thin vertical lines and those are where the joins are in my triple screens so this is actually the middle screen of three now because I run triple screens what I tend to do for myself is I make it slightly letterbox so I'll drag this top handle down again it scales it down I'll line up these two lines left and right and there we go I've got my uh, game broadcast captured within OBS uh, technically speaking you're ready to go because the game's there however there are a few extra things we can add in to make our broadcast a bit more exciting because at the moment we're only capturing a window we're not actually capturing any sound so come back to sources and let's add a new source click on the add button and capture an audio output. So audio output is those that come from your PC or from games. So we're going to add an audio output capture. Click on that and let's call it PC sound. And then we're going to give that a nice name, add it on. And then we need to select which device we're going to capture for sound. So click on the drop down list and it gives you a list of all the potential out, audio output devices that are on your PC. So I've got uh, four monitors. So each one of the monitors is capable of output. So they're all listed here. 
I've got two sound cards, so they're listed. What I tend to go for is the SP Diff Out Sound Plaster Z. That's my main sound card. And add that in. PC's not making any sound at the moment, but we've got a sound monitor up here. here. Uh, and you can see if I move over the menu, they make some bonging noises, and you can see them coming through on the sound meter. So we've got sound working. So we've got the game, and we've got sound. And if I go back to, uh, if I go into gallery, actually, and just replay one of the races, it'll give us something more interesting to look at in the background. So there we go. We've got the game broadcasting, and we've got audio coming through. So what else can we add on here? Well, there's my beautiful self, of course. So we need a webcam, usually. Most broadcasts you'll see on YouTube, etc. will include a webcam of the uh, individual doing the, uh, doing the show. So let's click on plus again. And this time we'll add a video capture device. And this one is going to be our webcam, so let's call it webcam. And let's OK and add that in. And it immediately guesses at the only webcam I've got added to my PC. But there's a drop-down list here. So if you had many uh, webcams, you could choose one of those. So click on OK. And that's the webcam component order. You see it's put it in the top left-hand corner. I'm looking up, by the way, because I'm having to do this on my uh, fourth monitor above my head. I can rescale with the handles in the corner, so let's rescale and let's put myself somewhere out the road. Usually down the bottom corner is the place to go. Stay, you know, unobtrusive to the broadcast itself. And this is basically what you carry on to build up your scene. So we've added three components to this scene. And we could carry on adding more. So audio input would be a microphone. So if I go to audio input capture and then call it mic. Add that in, same deal, drop down list, choose your input, and I've got my headset microphone. I'll click on OK, and OK that, and now you can see the microphone is picking up my voice. So the broadcast will include both the PC sound and the microphone. There's nothing going through the webcam, which is good, but just in case, click on the, uh, on the mute button there, and we've muted that audio source. It's no longer broadcasting. And what we can do from here is we can add, carry on adding components. So let's uh, add an uh, image. And let's add the, uh, the beeswax racing logo. And then you need to go and choose your image file. If you go and browse. Whatever images you might have handy. And then click on OK. And then your logo appears. And you can come and track that anywhere on the screen you wish. And you can rescale it as you see fit. And basically the world is your imagination from this point forward. It's really a case of looking through the list of components that you can add, understanding what they are and how they can be used. So there you go. However, if you want to stay, we can move on to a much more advanced option now. So when I'm broadcasting, I use overlays that show uh, throttle input, current speed, braking, uh, tire temps if it's available, etc. And the way that they work is I use SimHub. So if we bring up uh, SimHub and we go to Dash Studio within SimHub, if you come to any one of the dashboard items or any one of the overlays within SimHub, if I look here, let's say, at the TV style leaderboard, so this is a leaderboard that will show the position of everybody in the race, which is pretty handy, isn't it, for a live broadcast. If you click on More on the right-hand side, you'll see down the menu there's Copy OBS Browser Address to the Clipboard. OBS is the clue, and Browser is the clue. 
So for this dashboard component, this overlay component, copy the OBS address. So we've got that copy to the clipboard now. I switch back to OBS itself. So let's come back to OBS, add a new component, add a browser. I call this uh, leaderboard. Um, for the URL address, let's paste in the URL we just copied out of Simhub. And then click on OK. You can see that component's been added. This white outline is the actual shape of the leaderboard component. You can see there's quite a lot of space over left and right. Now that left and right space will be empty, but uh, I do like to have things tidy. Uh, we can't drag the handles. If you do, it scales the leaderboard itself and it will make it look a right mess. However, the leaderboard is about one third of the width of this browser object we added. So let's double click on that to bring up the properties. And the width is currently set to 800. So if we set it to, so if we set it to about 300, it's going to be closer to the mark. Click on OK. It seems a lot closer to the actual size we want there. It's just a little bit of margin either side. I'm going to position that over here on the right hand side of the screen. So we've added myself, we've added a leaderboard. And uh, let's switch back to uh, Sim Hub again, see what else we've got available. Um, because it's, uh, it's a few components. So the Gary Swallows does some great stuff. If you go and look on Race Department and do a, try and do a search for Gary Swallows, they're actually aimed at Formula One, but they seem to work okay with other systems as well. Um, so good one to use in here that I like. And we got we go to the uh, from the dashboards. If we go to overlays, there are other useful ones, and the, some of these are from Gary Swallows. And this is a really old one which I struggle to find. I'll see if I can find it again and put a link in the uh, in the description below. So copy the OBS address for that. Come back to OBS, add a new component, add a browser. Call this one Speedo. OK, paste in the address, click on OK, and this one will scale OK, but you can see this is a throttle and brake input speed, it's really really quite a good one for broadcasting in, so we'll scale that down, we'll leave that on the top left hand corner, and let's see what else we can add next. And next we'll add in some uh, text to describe what it is we're watching. So click on the plus, uh, add text, and just give it a name so we know what this component is. Uh, the text that we will enter, I'll just call it a sample race. I've got a lot of control over this text. So we've got the font, uh, not the most intuitive bit of interface. I was kept trying to click here first, but select the font at the side. And I've got a nice uh, Formula One fonts I've got from uh, having installed the Gary Swallows um, dashboards. You choose the size of the font so we can make it a little bit smaller. It's currently on 256, we'll put it to 48. We could strike out on the line and change as you can normally do in Windows. It's a bit too small perhaps, so let's go back up in size. 72. Here we go. And also there's an option here to read from file. So this is quite handy if you want to make a ticker tape type display at the bottom of your screen. Uh, but we'll not touch on that there. I'll let you go and figure that one out for yourself. It's not too hard to do. Turn on anti-alias in, that really helps. Uh, text transform, so we can force it to be all uppercase or I case, etc. You can make the text go vertical if you wish. You can choose the color of a text, should you wish a nice contrast. The opacity, so you can make it see-through. You can give it a gradient. You can change the background color, etc., etc. You've got a lot of options here with the, with the text and the font and how you control it. But this read from file makes it very flexible to have an external file that controls the actual text that's displayed. So that covers off the core components that go into building up a stream. And just to give you an example of how these components will work. In fact, no, we'll add one more. There's another nice one I like. You go back to SimHub. 
and look for fastest lap pop-up. So we'll get the OBS address for that one. And hopefully um, ACC will play party with this. And add a new browser item. Click on OK. Paste in the URL. Click on OK again. You can see this one is a bit too high. So select it. Click on the properties. And this will make it just 200 high. Looking at the uh, scale there. OK. There we go. And it's a bit too big in general. We'll just shrink it down. And we'll put the fastest lap pop up here. So when somebody does a fastest lap, up oh, that will pop. We've got a leaderboard here. Okay, so we're going to switch back to ACC itself. So what I'll do this quick sample race. I'm not as myself on this one. I'm Jacoma in P19. So you can see me throttle inputs are on there. I'm a break. And we've got the uh, field on the right hand side. Now these overlays are only visible in the broadcast. They are not visible in my game. So they're not interfering with my race. Let's wait for them to actually start. There we go, green light. So Sim Hub is doing its job, it's picking up the information from the game, feeding it to all the dashboards, and the dashboards are appearing in the overlays within the broadcast. I'm going to turn my lights on it, it's getting dark. Oh, where's he going? You can see I've moved up a position on the leaderboard. And the viewers be able to see what speed I'm doing, what throttle input I'm doing, how when I'm applying the brakes. And there you go, the fastest laps just popped up with a 137 for Daniel McKay. So the fastest lap components working as well. So there you go. And I managed to, in just a few minutes, build up a little broadcast, bring in the game, bring in a webcam, and bring in some additional components. And the rest is really about experimenting and understanding what's available in the toolbox of OBS, uh, about whether how fancy you want to make your actual broadcast itself. Now I hope this has been useful and I hope you don't all like dislodge me from my broadcast and my audience, steal them all away from me, but that's all fair in love and war, I guess. But uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please leave a comment and a like and uh, hopefully I'll be able to enjoy your shows if they ever get a break. <laughs>